Hey, welcome to Savon TV. I'm at pushgapradio.com. Pushgapradio.com. Bridging the gap between old school and new school radio. Pushgapradio.com. It's Dallas, so, baby. So, how did white people get white privilege? Because that's the thing. It's white privilege killing the middle class. It's racism killing the middle class. Okay, now there's this guy, Tim Wise, who's going to explain to you about how the white privilege came about and the separation of whites and blacks, because, you know, it's just uh, racism is just a construct. Okay, and it's used for separation It's used to keep the white people distracted from the rich, the poor white people. Distracted from the rich people. Now, the great Tim Wise wrote a book called The Pathology of Privilege, Racism, White Denial, and the Cost of Inequality. And he has been going around giving this speech, and he gives an explanation of white privilege and the damage it does not only to people of color, but to white people as well. Okay. And, um, he tells, he's going to tell you about a guy named Nathaniel Bacon who was trying to put together a revolt and got shut down. And this is where you get white privilege. Check it out. But in the colonies of what would become the United States, what did we see in the 1660s, 1670s? We began to see that Africans of indentured servant status, many of them not enslaved yet, they were not necessarily permanently enslaved, some were, others were indentured like many poor Europeans for periods of seven to eleven years. They could work off their indenture and then they would be free labor technically. Realized, as did the white indentured servants, the Europeans who hadn't even been called white yet, that they had a lot of things in common, like the fact that they were all getting their clock cleaned by the elite. And so they would get together more than our history books taught us to foment rebellion against the elite, to try to get a better deal for themselves on the basis of economic necessity and economic justice. And what did the elite do when you see that you're outnumbered by black and white folks who are penniless, landless, peasants? You have to do one of two things. You either have to kill them all, but you can't do that because who's going to work? Rich folks weren't going to. They had to get poor people to work. The whole point was to be a person of leisure back in those days. That was the goal, was not to work. So you couldn't kill them all. You didn't want to kill them all. You had to do the work yourself. You had to build your own levy, build your own house. No, pick your own tobacco, harvest your own cotton. No, we're not going to do any of that. So you can't kill them, but you can co-opt them. And so the elite in Virginia, for example, in the colony, begins to give certain carrots to people of European descent saying things like, you know, we're going to let you own a little land. Not much, but just a little. And we're going to get rid of indentured servitude. Now you're free labor. And by the way, once you're free labor, you get 50 acres of land just because you're free labor, see? So we're going to cut you in on this deal. We're going to let you enter into contracts. We're going to let you testify in court. And here's the best of all. We're going to put you on the slave patrol to keep those people in line, right? The idea was you're still going to get your clock clean. We still don't like you. We still aren't going to really empower you or change your economic subordination. But we're going to make you honorary members of this team and you're going to help us keep those other people down. And so they got a little taste of power and it did effectively divide and conquer those coalitions. Those rebellions began to stop almost instantly. Okay, so that's... That's that's Tim Wise breaking it down for you. So does racism cost white people in middle class America? According to a regional report uh, published in 2020, eliminating racial and ethnic discrimination in wealth could add five hundred billion dollars to the region's two hundred and forty eight billion dollar economy. What they're saying is without race, if racism wasn't here. There would be fifty billion more dollars added to the freaking economy. Well, and, and if we focus on the things that are important instead yeah. of things that are not, you know, the color of somebody's skin should be the least of your worries when you know we're all going through pretty much the same thing. Yeah, and you know, it depends on what the situations are. You do right. sometimes see them come together, and. I'm thinking, especially with all of these different groups that are coming into the country, right. who's to say that these people aren't sitting up in there, aren't, you know, going to have another right. 9-11 attack one day or something. Yeah. We're so busy we'll focused be their on, friend. 
Yeah. I mean, they're, they're, yeah, they're focused on other things. They're thinking about, I'm talking about aliens and, yeah. and all of that kind of stuff. And we don't give a damn about an alien until you show us one. Right. They're trying to distract. Oh, they have. It's all a distraction. They, yeah. They, they, you know, they have some mm-hmm. that allegedly. And so they have been traipsing them out there letting you see that this mm-hmm. is what they're supposed to look like. They go like. get them from Hollywood. And, and, yeah. And all this kind of stuff, you know, instead of, again, focusing on what are y'all going to do about this inflation? Because what they're talking about doing again is before the end of the year, which we're already there. They're talking about raising the interest rates yet again. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, we are perhaps having another shutdown September 30th. Right. And it's like we're already, you know, barely keeping heads above water. And here you go. Radio.com. We want to be your official Dallas internet station.